What's up everybody, NFX here with another tutorial. This tutorial I'm going to talk about EQ and the sweet spot. And what I'm talking about with, about the sweet spot is finding the place in, in the sound's frequency that brings out the best in the sound. Now the sweet spot's going to be different for everybody because obviously what sound you might be looking for, you might think is is better might not be to someone else but the technique I'm going to show you is going to help you to find that regardless okay so I've loaded up um, a project that I've been working on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate finding the sweet spot on the kick drum and then I'm going to uh, show you how to do a complementary EQ on the bass um, now the technique I'm going to show you, you don't always have to do this with the kick and the bass, uh, but if they have a problem as far as making the low end of your mix muddy, uh, you might want to consider doing something like the technique I'm about to show you. But um, finding the sweet spot can work for any instrument, and you don't need to do uh, a complementary uh, EQ on something else, but it, it can come in handy if the situation is right. And hopefully it'll make more sense to you when you see what I'm about to show you. First thing I want to do is I want to um, I want to play the mix for you just so you can hear how it sounds. We're not really going to change it dramatically because um, you know the mix isn't too bad right now. But uh, in order for me to demonstrate this, uh, I just want you to have a starting point. So I'm going to go ahead and play the mix, and uh, and then when I and then we'll and then we'll continue, and I'll show you the uh, technique. Okay, so that's uh, like four bars of the song, and that's all we're going to really work with. That's all we need to do. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the sweet spot in that kick. Now the kick drum, uh, I think it's okay. Um, it's actually two kicks that are layered together. And uh, I don't really have a problem with it. But maybe we can make it a little bit, a little bit better. Uh, and that's what we're going to try to do. So I'm going to focus in on the kick sound for you. And it might sound a little bit thin. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to translate in the video because the video is going to be compressed and the audio is going to be compressed in, in the video. So it might not come across as clear as it, as it could. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to uh, find the, uh, the sweet spot. And the way you do that is by using a parametric EQ. Now FL Studio has a built-in parametric EQ for every uh, insert in the... Um, mixer and it's these three uh, bars here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we do it using uh, this uh, and then what you can do is you can apply that if you have a different sequencer or if you have a different plug-in that you like to use uh, you can apply basically the knowledge to that other uh, parametric equalizer okay so the first thing we want to do is we want to basically we want to do a boost so I'm going to boost this center channel right here, and you can see that it's making this nice wide open frequency boost. And what that's doing is it's uh, about in the 1400 hertz range, which is where this line is going up and down. It's boosting it, and then on the on the ranges to either side of it, it's boosting it in degrees. So you can see it's like a curve. So the over here it's the frequencies which are in the 5000 range where, where my crosshairs are those are being boosted a little bit and then a little bit more as we move down to the you know the 2000s and the 3000s and then coming down even further to about 1500 right here it's the max and then going down even further in the 1000 area it's a little bit less coming down even further in the 500 area it's a little bit less till finally it's just flat it's on the flat line again okay and if we play the, the kicks now, you're going to hear they're going to sound different. And you notice they're much louder as far as the energy that they're using. Now they're, they're hitting way up here. Whereas before... So you can hear there's, you know, you're not getting a lot of benefit right now 
from that. But what we're going to do is we're going to tighten up this uh, mountain here that we've drawn. And the way we do that is by using um, basically the width parameter. And some EQs it's called bandwidth, and some it's called Q um, in, uh, in uh, FL Studio. I think it's just called uh, uh, width. You know, it depends uh, what, what you're using. But we're going to move this knob, and you're going to notice now this is getting tighter. Okay? And that's what we want. So we're going to give it, you know, to about that much. We want it fairly tight because we're going to find the sweet spot as far as the frequency goes. And the reason why we're upping it all the way is because we want it very exaggerated. And then we'll bring it down once we find the, uh, the general area that we need. Uh, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to play it again. And you can hear it's still, you know, it's definitely not any better. But what, what I'm going to do is as I'm playing it now. I'm going to start sweeping this thing down. You could sweep it up or down, but you have to think about the instrument you're using. If you're trying to find the sweet spot in a snare, you're probably going to want to find it somewhere in the middle. If you're trying to find the sweet spot for a flute, you're probably going to want to find it towards the high end. In this case, it's a kick drum, so we're going to want to find it towards the low end. So I'm going to play um, the kick pattern, and then I'm going to start bringing this guy down until I find where it sounds best to me. And about right here. Now, it's a little bit boxy, but that's okay because once I bring this, this guy down a little bit, it sounds, uh, it sounds better. Down there, it's got a lot of boom to it now. And generally, you can do this in the full mix because it, by doing it that way, you'll hear how it sounds. You'll find the sweet spot in the full mix. So let me play the, the full mix and then um, let me reset this and then we'll, we'll look for it in the full mix. It's very, it's very, very pronounced now, uh, and there's a lot of low end to it. So I'm gonna have to cut that down. Let me just let you hear it soloed. And then once I bring this down, it's going to, uh, you know, it's not going to be as exaggerated. So that's without it. That's with it. So to me, that's more along the sweet spot. Uh, and then what you can do, uh, if, you're, if you want to further clear up the mix, uh, you, can, uh, you can do what's called a complementary EQ on another instrument that's in that frequency space. In, in our case, it could be a bass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the bass, and um, what, what we're going to end up doing here is the opposite. We're going to cut. So I'm going to do this. And I'm basically going to cut. Now, I want to cut the same area that I boosted in the kick. And the way I can do that is by copying the value. Uh, and you can't see it. Let me get this up on the screen a little bit. Okay, what I can do is I can copy the value. It's still off the screen. Uh, Let's see. What I can do is copy the value. There we go. Hopefully that's in there. Copy the value. Go to my other instrument and then paste that value. And now you can see it's moved it down over here right where I need it to be. And then, of course, I don't want it full either. I just want it a little bit. And I might want to widen this uh, just, a just a touch. 
And uh, what that's doing is that's removing the bass somewhat from those frequencies that I'm boosting on the kick. And that lets the kick come through a little bit better. And it lets the bass kind of live with the kick so that they don't get muddy uh, in the bottom. Um, now, just as a side note, one of the things that, that I like to do with, with my kick, if it's not a sub bass, you know, like that booming 808 bass, it's really, really low and it, and it sustains, is I like to actually roll off some, some low frequency like this and then boost the part that's the sweet spot. And then that further removes some of the kick from the bass, actually. So let's listen to the mix. So hopefully you could hear that the kick is coming through clearer and the bass line is, is clear. They're not fighting for, for anything in the low end of the, of the spectrum. And remember, you can do this technique. You don't need to do it for two instruments and you don't need to do it complementary style. You can do it for a single instrument um, like a snare. Maybe you want to you wanna find a sweet spot in your snare. You know, you kind of do the same thing. You know, you just boost it with a, with a narrow cue, really high, play it, when you find where you think it sounds best. Now, I don't, I don't need to do it on this one. I mean, I picked that, that snare, that clap, because it sounded right as is. So in this case, I'm, I'm actually not going to keep it, but I just wanted to explain that you can do this on other instruments. Um, it, it works out pretty well when you um, also have two instruments, like let's say two guitars. Guitars are real notorious if you have two guitar parts um, where they tend to overlap each other and it's hard to distinguish one part from the other sometimes. And you can solve that usually with some panning, uh, but you can also use this complementary trick and uh, remove frequencies from one in the same area that you're boosting in another and that will help both guitar parts to be even more separated to the listener and you can distinguish the two and hopefully it makes your mix sound better. Uh, another thing that you can use this type of technique for is to um, make some room for vocals. Uh, sometimes you have a mix and it sounds great and then you throw vocals in there and then all of a sudden everything gets all muddy and, and mixed up and it doesn't sound as good. And what you can do sometimes is you can actually go to uh, your vocal channel and you can boost or you can go to some other channel where you have all your instruments routed to it and then do like a cut. Like you might want to just cut a little bit. Here this is in my, in my master channel but let's say for example this was the channel where all my all my instruments were being routed to and my vocals were being routed to a, a different channel. Well then I could scoop out some room here like this for my vocals. And then when I lay my vocals in there I, I, you know, I'd either boost them or you, you don't even have to boost them necessarily but I'm making room. So even though it looks small here, um, to the ear, you know, you do it by ear of course, but to the ear it'll move those out of the way and it's not going to sound like it's missing anything when, once the vocals are in there. It'll actually help your mix sound even clearer if there's a problem to begin with. And, and that's the big thing is if. Uh, a lot of times we learn techniques and then we want to just apply them to everything and that's not what you should do. You should try them and experiment with them, sure, but always let your ear be the final judge of whatever it is you're doing. Hopefully you've learned a few things and uh, can take that and run with it. And be sure to check out some of my other tutorials at www.warbeats.com. Um, I have some of them up on YouTube and some of them up on Google, but I have all of them up on my website. And right now I have uh, over 30 tutorials. There's even a few guest tutorials on there. Um, I have over 100 remakes and FL Studio projects, uh, project files that you can download. Um, 
you know, and, and see how people have, have done remakes of songs. And there are even some uh, drum kits and some other things in the download area. There's a lot of stuff there. There's a, a nice community there. Uh, I urge you to check it out. You know, no question is, is too simple or too dumb or, or anything like that. You know, I try to promote that uh, we're all there to learn and or teach. And uh, <clears throat> the community kind of reflects that, I think. And it's, in my opinion, a, a great place. So check it out. And uh, in the meantime, this is NFX saying I'll see you in the next tutorial.